some very complex work outside the space station, key milestones for our Artemis program, and a fitting tribute for an historic flyby. A few of the stories to tell you about this week at NASA. On November 15th, our Andrew Morgan and Luca Parmitano of the European Space Agency ventured outside the International Space Station to begin a series of spacewalks to repair a cosmic ray detector called the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, or AMS. The complex spacewalks, designed to fix a coolant leak and upgrade AMS's cooling system, involve intricate cutting, splicing, and reconnecting of cooling tubes and power and data cables. Astronauts have never cut and reconnected fluid lines during a spacewalk. These AMS spacewalks are considered the most complex of their kind since the Hubble Space Telescope servicing missions. Vice President Mike Pence and our Administrator Jim Bridenstine visited our Ames Research Center in California's Silicon Valley on November 14th to highlight the work being done at Ames in support of our Artemis program, which plans to return astronauts to the surface of the moon. You here at Ames are going to be a critical part of helping us develop the technologies to live on the moon, not for days, but for months and even years. We'll learn how to make use of all the resources the moon has to offer. One of the facilities highlighted during the event was the Vertical Motion Simulator. This facility will have an integral role in developing a lunar lander for Artemis, which will land the first woman and next man on the moon by 2024. At our Michoud Assembly Facility in New Orleans, all four RS-25 engines have been attached to the core stage of our Space Launch System, or SLS rocket, in preparation for Artemis 1 the first integrated uncrewed flight test of SLS and our Orion spacecraft. To complete assembly of the rocket stage, engineers and technicians will integrate the propulsion and electrical systems within the structure. Meanwhile, at our Kennedy Space Center in Florida, the Orion crew and service module stack for Artemis 1 was lifted out of the final assembly and test cell on November 11th, where it has been since July, for mating and closeout processing. Engineers will now prepare Orion for transport to our Plumbrook station in Sandusky, Ohio, for its next phase of testing to certify the complete vehicle for flight. The Kuiper Belt object, formerly known as 2014 MU69, has been officially named Arakal, a Native American term meaning sky in the Powhatan Algonquin language. The naming was announced at a November 12th ceremony at our headquarters in Washington, D.C. as a tribute to the record-breaking New Year's Day 2019 flyby of Arakoff by our New Horizons spacecraft, which was some 4 billion miles from Earth at the time. With consent from Powhatan tribal elders and representatives, our New Horizons team proposed the name to the international authority that names Kuiper Belt objects. In recognition of Veterans Day, our Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama recently welcomed Commanding Army General James Dickinson for a visit to the center's Payload Operations Integration Center. While there, he had a space-to-ground conversation with astronaut and fellow soldier Andrew Morgan, an active-duty emergency physician, about Morgan's experiences aboard the International Space Station. NASA salutes all active duty personnel and veterans of our armed forces and would like to thank them for their service to our country. That's what's up this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, follow us on the web at nasa.gov twan.